is here. Now, broadcasting from the underground command post, deep in the bowels of a hidden bunker, somewhere under the brick and steel of a nondescript building, we've once again made contact with our leader, Mark Levin. Mark Levin here, our number, 877-381-3811, 877-381-3811. Making a lot of news, you know, about Hunter Biden's lawyer stepping down because he might be brought into some indictment charges later as a, as a witness. Who cares with what's going on in this country? Why do I care about that? I don't. I'm going to read something to you, America, from the dorm report. From the dorm report, that's right. Based on the review of Crossfire Hurricane and related intelligence activities, we conclude that the department and the FBI failed to uphold their important mission of strict fidelity to the law, connection with certain events and activities described in this report. As noted, former FBI attorney Kevin Kleinsmith committed a crime by fabricating language in an email that was material to the FBI obtaining a FISA surveillance order. In other instances, FBI personnel working in that same FISA application displayed at best a cavalier attitude towards accuracy and completeness. FBI personnel also repeatedly disregarded important requirements that they continue to seek renewals of that FISA surveillance while acknowledging both then and in hindsight they didn't genuinely believe there was probable cause to believe that the target was knowingly engaged in clandestine intelligence activities on behalf of a foreign power. Our investigation also revealed that senior FBI personnel displayed a serious lack of analytical rigor towards the information they received especially information received from politically affiliated persons and entities. This information in part triggered and sustained Crossfire Hurricane and contributed to the subsequent need for Special Counsel Mueller's investigation. In particular, there was significant reliance on investigative leads provided or funded directly or indirectly by Trump's political opponents. Department did not even, did not adequately examine or question these materials and the motivations of those providing them, even when, at about the same time, the direct to the FBI and others learned of significant or potentially contrary information. Throughout the duration of Crossfire Hurricane, facts and circumstances that were inconsistent with the premise that Trump or persons associated with the Trump campaign were involved in a collusive or conspiratorial relationship with the Russian government were ignored or simply assessed away. Indeed, from even before the opening of Crossfire Hurricane, some of those most directly involved in the subsequent investigation had expressed their open disdain for Trump, asked about when they would uh, open an investigation on Trump, asserted that they would prevent Trump from becoming president. As discussed throughout this report, our investigations revealed that the stated (coughs) basis for opening a full investigation to determine whether individuals associated with the Trump campaign 
were witting and or coordinating activities with the government of Russia was seriously flawed. Again, the FBI's failure to critically analyze information that ran counter to the narrative of a Trump-Russia collusive relationship exhibited throughout Crossfire Hurricane is extremely troublesome. In other words, Hillary Clinton, the Democrat Party, their lawyers, and the Obama administration interfered with the election of 2016 to try and stop Donald Trump from being elected. Nobody was charged with false claims of fraud. Nobody was charged with attempting, with attempting to interfere with the election. Nobody was charged with a RICO violation. Nobody was charged with a damn thing. Except that one junior lawyer for falsifying an email, whiting out something and putting the opposite meaning when they saw the FISA application. What about it, Mr. Producer? Nobody was charged. Not at the federal level, not at the state level, not at any level. And reporters got Pulitzer Prizes for regurgitating what the state party, the Democrat party, was leaking to the state media. Nobody was indicted for anything. The Democrats have challenged election after election on the floor of the House, in the courts, and elsewhere. Elsewhere. Every Republican president who gets elected is illegitimate. George W. Bush was said to be illegitimate. Donald Trump was said to be illegitimate. And now, the criminalization of this entire process is shocking. Chris Christie said today, and of course whatever he says is so crucially important, they have a right to make these legal challenges, and when they're over, that's the end of it. Uh, no, big boy, that's not the way it works. Congress makes the final decision. Not a district court, not a circuit court, not even the Supreme Court. Congress makes the final decision. Even if Congress, in the Bush v. Gore case, had decided it would ignore the Supreme Court, and it would count ballots, excuse me, would count electors a different way, Congress would prevail. Period. So it's not what the legal process says, it's what the political process and the constitutional process says. Congress has the final say. Congress decides if there's fake electors or there's not fake electors. Congress decides if a close election goes one way or another. You don't criminalize these decisions. Presidents are free to tell somebody, you know, see if you can find another 11 or 12,000 votes. It's not assumed that that's a crime. Presidents are free to contact secretaries of state, governors, state legislators, asking them to see what they can do to reverse the election. It doesn't mean they're committing a crime. None of this is criminal. False claims of fraud? You want to hear false claims of fraud, America? We would have to we would have to open Yankee Stadium and ship all the politicians in Washington, D.C. to Yankee Stadium who would be charged with false claims of fraud. And unfortunately, I've had to do this before, and I won't do it as long as it is. It goes on for 12, 13 minutes. Just a few minutes of this, Democrats. In every recent presidential election where Republicans have won, Democrats making false claims of fraud. Go. You can run the best campaign. You can even become the nominee. And you can have the election stolen from you. 
Mm-hmm. How can you win with Russian interference, though? That's, That's a real what thing. I'm scared about no, in 2020. But, but rightly. Because right. I think he's an illegitimate president that didn't really win. So how do you, you know, fight against that in 2020? You are absolutely right. He is an illegitimate president in my mind. Would you be my vice president for Canada? <laughs> Folks, look, I absolutely agree. Trump didn't actually win the election in 2016. He lost the election, and he was put into office because the Russians interfered. Trump knows he's an illegitimate president. The president-elect, although legally elected, is not legitimate. I don't see this president-elect as a legitimate president. You said you believe that Russia's interference altered the outcome of the election. I do. We have a president who, if in fact it is proven, uh, has been assisted by the Russians and may in fact not be a legitimate president. The one thing that Trump is fearful of uh, when it comes to his being president is that finally we will see how illegitimate his victory actually was. I have an objection. I object to the 15 votes from the state of North Carolina. I object because people are horrified. He's an illegitimate president. Do you believe Trump is a legitimate president? What I believe is that there's no question that the outcome of this election was affected by the Russian interference. So stop, stop. What about all the false claims of fraud? What about it, America? What about the conspiracy to obstruct an election? What about the conspiracy to prevent, to prevent Donald Trump, the rightful winner, from taking office? What about it? What about all the Democrat lawyers involved? Involved? In pushing the Russia collusion argument. What about them? How come none of them are facing sanctions or disbarment? How come none of them have been charged? We have the dorm report that lays it out. Chapter and verse. If Fannie Willis, or whatever the hell her name is. Fannie Willis. If her charges are legitimate. If Smith's charges are legitimate, how is it that we just realized that these are campaign crimes? How is it that Joseph Kennedy Sr. wasn't charged with a phalanx of crimes and didn't do prison time? How is it that John Kennedy, oh yes, John Kennedy, who stole the nomination from Hubert Humphrey and Lyndon Johnson and then stole the presidency from Richard Nixon in Cook County, in West Virginia, in Texas. How is it that John Kennedy wasn't indicted if these, in fact, are long-cherished criminal charges that would be applied to any party in president. How is it that Lyndon Johnson didn't go to the prison, didn't go to prison after stealing an election, first for the House of Representatives, then for the Senate? How is that possible? And how is it possible that Hillary Clinton who destroyed 30,000 emails, cell phones, mishandled classified information, made false statements about it, obstructed justice, is it in federal prison? How is it that Bill Clinton, Mr. Classified Videos in the Sox drawer, how is it that he's not in federal prison? How is it possible? That Joseph Kennedy Sr., John Kennedy, Lyndon Johnson, Hillary Clinton, and Bill Clinton aren't all in federal or state prison. Or weren't. We know the answer to this. Used to be an understanding between the two parties. The party in power and the party out of power. Don't criminalize these elections. Politics is rough. Politics has to be resolved politically. And ultimately, for president and vice president, it has to be resolved by Congress. 
You don't take garden variety criminal statutes or even criminal statutes that are ridiculous, like the Klan statute, the Enron statute, the espionage statute, and use those in perverse ways to go after your opponents. False claims of fraud? Do you realize how many politicians would be doing time in prison? Find me some votes? That's now a crime? Attempting to to persuade state legislators to appoint a new slate of electors? Just the attempt? We'll wind up with lawyers being indicted? Conspiracy to change the outcome of an election? That's what all election challenges are. She even goes across state lines, does Fanny, and Arizona and Pennsylvania and so forth, claiming they did the same thing in those states. That there's this grand mob conspiracy. And it's so big, we're going to throw all 19 defendants together. Let them figure it out. Sounds like Iran, doesn't it? Iran. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. You know what helps me sleep well at night? Physical gold. I'm concerned about what the Biden administration is doing, and I've decided to learn more about gold IRAs to help me diversify. Did you know you can buy gold for your IRA or 401k? Gold can't be tracked like digital currency. No one has to know what you're buying, and there's no way to print more. My best resource for gold IRAs is Augusta Precious Metals. Their track record is no less than phenomenal. Learn why thousands of Americans are getting gold IRAs as part of the retirement portfolio and you need to contact Augusta Precious Metals and get their free guide. I'm serious. Text LEVIN to 68592. Again, text L-E-V-I-N to 68592. LEVIN to 68592 or go to AugustaPreciousMetals.com. That's AugustaPreciousMetals.com. Text date and message rates may apply. Performance varies. Consult your financial professionals before making investment decisions and get risk disclosures at AugustaPreciousMetals.com. Everything I told you doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because this is exactly the way the Democrat Party wants it. They don't care if they look like hypocrites, or in fact, they are hypocrites. They don't care if they contradict themselves. It doesn't matter. The old ends justify the means. I see Newt's kind of picked up a little bit of what I'm trying to say here, which is, the big picture is, the Democrat Party wants to be the monopoly party, the government party, and wants to blow out the GOP. And it's going to, if this keeps up. But it's even worse. They want to do all those things. So we create the mirage of justice, the mirage of democracy, the mirage of fair elections. And in reality, it's a mirage that covers up tyranny. Because that's what this is. There's nothing, <coughs> there's nothing to debate here, really. We know what they're doing. They know what they're doing. The media know what they're doing. The rhinos and never Trumpers know what they're doing. And it's fine with all of them. And it's not with us. But they have the upper hand. I'll be right back. You know what helps me sleep well at night? Physical gold. I'm concerned about what the Biden administration is doing, and I've decided to learn more about gold IRAs to help me diversify. Did you know you can buy gold for your IRA or 401k? Gold can't be tracked like digital currency. No one has to know what you're buying, and there's no way to print more. My best resource for gold IRAs is Augusta Precious Metals. Their track record is no less than phenomenal. Learn why thousands of Americans are getting gold IRAs as part of the retirement portfolios 
shows, and you need to contact Augusta Precious Metals and get their free guide. I'm serious. Text LEVIN to 68592. Again, text L-E-V-I-N to 68592. LEVIN to 68592, or go to AugustaPreciousMetals.com. That's AugustaPreciousMetals.com. Text date and message rates may apply. Performance varies. Consult your financial professionals before making investment decisions and get risk disclosures at AugustaPreciousMetals.com. He's driving the media mad. Mark Levin, call in with your outrage. 877-381-3811. In addition to all this, I'm holding a decision by a judge in Louisiana that people may have forgotten. And in that decision, this judge lays out Syllable, word, sentence, paragraph, chapter after chapter of how the Democrat Party surrogates and how the Biden administration used censorship, banning, suspensions, scarlet letters on Twitter to affect the outcome of the last election. False statements. False allegations of fraud, censorship, (coughs) including the Biden laptop. Nobody was charged with anything. Nobody was charged here. This is a 155-page document. The dorm report is 300 pages long. Nobody was charged with a crime. Nobody. What about those 51 spooks? Those national security people? And the letter they wrote to influence the last presidential election. Any of them been charged with a federal offense, America? Any of them? None. How's that possible under these circumstances? I mean, look at the charges. Chris Christie says, you know, why don't I even waste my time even, even mocking that SOB, to be perfectly honest with you? But ask yourself, what happened there? Nothing. They're out there collecting their pension checks, double dipping, you know, as experts on this and giving speeches on that, trashing you and me, trashing Trump while claiming self-righteously that they are the saviors of the country. The 51. Of course, in collusion with the New York Slimes, the Washington Compost and the rest of the private media. Right, Maggie? Right, Jeremy? Right, Philip? No, you can't compare the two. No, of course not. But what happened? Not only false information to influence an election? How is it that Blinken got away with this? How? Well, we know, again, what did I just say? This isn't about consistency. This isn't about a lack of hypocrisy. I mean, that's like saying during the Russian Revolution or Lenin's short reign of terror, followed by Stalin's long reign of terror, that it's not fair, that it's not consistent, that it's not just. And when you read the Democrat Party Hates America, it's all in there. And the republication copies of this book have been circulating now for two weeks. And I would ask those who get it and read it, please don't just regurgitate what's in it. Hold your fire. Hold your fire. Books released on September 19th. Hold your fire. Or you're going to look like fools who took the information out of the book. Just hold your fire. The Monopoly Party, Monopoly Power, that's what's going on. I watched this DA last night and I said, boy, you are dumb as a 
as an empty barrel. Yet, yet, all the power in the world. And what do I mean dump, dumb as an empty barrel? She wants you to believe that she has no idea how the indictments wound up on the clerk's website and yet everybody knows that the clerk didn't do it on her own. The clerk didn't have them until she personally signed off on it. It was all loaded up. They made a mistake. What was the mistake? They made it public. And why is this important? Because it shows you it shows you what a crock this whole thing is. We go through the motions of justice. There's no justice. We go through the motions of a grand jury. Peers, citizens, sitting on a grand jury to check the prosecutor. That's not what they do anymore. That's not the goal. She had this grand jury eating out of her hand. She knew it. And she knew what they would do. It's not hard to be a prosecutor. It's much harder to be a defense lawyer. It's not hard to have all the resources you want, even if you're an imbecile like she is. It's not hard. Just throw together every possible crime you can think of. Bring it in front of a Democrat judge. Bring it in front of a Democrat grand jury. Bring it in front of a Democrat trial jury. How hard can that be? How hard can that be? Jack Smith's no better. He's got the brain of a turnip. But it doesn't matter. Same thing. He can be put in his place by one jury after another, whether, it, whether it's the John Edwards case, the Menendez case. Doesn't matter. He can be put in place by the Supreme Court. This is a badge of honor when it comes to the Democrats. So when you bring it up, they don't care. So what? So what? What are you going to do about it? John Kennedy should, be, should have been in prison. Lyndon Johnson should have been in prison. John Kennedy's father should have been in prison. Mayor Daley in Chicago, he should have been in prison. A lot of them should have been in prison. Hillary Clinton should have been in prison. Bill Clinton should have been in prison. Perhaps their staffs and many others. The 51 national security advisors, according to these charges, they should all be in prison. Oh, yes. This is what we're facing in this country today. It's a damn shame what's going on in this country. And I have in front of me this memorandum ruling on a request for preliminary injunction by the judge in Louisiana. By the judge in Louisiana. And this case was heard on appeal, and the, the decision is still pending on appeal, but that said, the panel of judges who heard it on the circuit level, they were none too pleased with what the White House and the party had done. None too pleased. It's frightening what's going on in this country. But if you understand the bigger context, it's even more frightening than you might think. The judiciary's in on it. The Soros prosecutors, Democrat prosecutors. And, you know, Charlie Kirk has a great piece over at the Federalist. He's saying, you know, there are more Republican attorneys general in America than there are Democrat attorneys general. There's 27. 23 Democrats. And he's talking about also Republican district attorneys or state prosecutors and so forth. And he's saying, he's not a lawyer, he's saying as an example. Hunter Biden hired a call girl service in more than one state. 
that these call girls were used in more than one state. Drug addict or no drug addict, he purchased drugs illegally in more than one state. And he's not charged with a damn thing by a single Republican prosecutor. Nothing. Nothing. The Democrat prosecutors are sitting there. What can we do to Trump and his supporters? Anything? Anything we can do? Sure. We got the 1871 Klan Act. We can throw that one. And our media will lap it all up. They'll be excited. Get it to Maggie Haberman as fast as you can. She's the go-to propagandist for the government. Let's try those Enron statutes. We've used them on the protesters and so far. All the judges in the D.C. area have supported. I have a senator friend of mine that swears by one of these judges. Well, he has done the same damn thing. So sorry, I took a pass on that. Just saying. Oh, and while we're at it, there's a financial obstruction charge. It can be stretched to, you know, an attack on the on the functioning of the government, but it's nothing to do with elections, of course. It has to do with if contractors or grant recipients cheat the government, it can have an impact on the functioning of the government. We can stretch that baby out of proportion, too. Oh, yeah, we got those. Then we have the Espionage Act in Florida, which is a favorite of the Democrat grand jury in Washington, D.C., which violates the venue limitations, according to the Department of Justice. No matter what the low IQ crackpot sleazebags on MSNBC have to say. Those are stupid people. Those are the people who swore up and down, as did almost all legal analysts, that Donald Trump would be charged with sedition or conspiracy to commit sedition, whatever the hell that is, an insurrection. And he wasn't charged with either. Believe me, Jack the Ripper looked. He looked hard, but he couldn't make a case because it wasn't there. Because it wasn't there. So let's step back and do something that nobody else will do. What exactly is Donald Trump, from a more pedestrian, plain English point of view, charged with? That if they get their way in maximum sentences, he'll be serving close to a thousand years in prison. What would it be? Let's see. He took documents with him under the Presidential Records Act. But then they claimed under the Espionage Act that he had to give classified documents back. He says, no, I don't. Yes, you do. So he gives some of them back, but he holds some others back. They're in the middle of negotiations, and Jack the Ripper decides, screw it. You have some brave FBI agents who are saying, no, we don't want to do a search warrant in a SWAT team, but they're overruled by a guy by the name of Brett, who was accused tonight of extortion by one of the attorneys defending one of the defendants in that case, and that hasn't been resolved. So they get their search warrant, which is a search warrant that says in so many words, we need to go after these boxes and anything else that's around those boxes. Well, that's very specific. That's called a general warrant. Defeats the entire purpose. They send a SWAT team down there, as you well know. While President Trump's not there, they go into his home and they do what they did. So this is what he's charged with by a D.C. grand jury, and they throw these indictments into Florida for Judge Canada to handle. And she says, what are you doing? You throwing this stuff into my courtroom from a grand jury up north, 1,200 miles away, that violates Department of Justice policy. Oh, no, 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 she only took that position because Mark Levin and Jim Trusty said so. That's the problem with the MSNBC press and Comcast. Comcast that I despise to begin with. What else? So we have the other Washington, D.C. charges. Yeah, we dug up the Ku Klux Klan Act. That's how strong these are. We dug up the Enron laws, and we dug up the financial obstruction laws. Well, what do those have to do with anything? Nothing? Okay. That's a couple hundred years in prison. Then we go to Manhattan, where we have another nut job 
And he says the fact that Donald Trump entered into non-disclosure agreements, which virtually every every office does. I bet the Manhattan DA's office has done so multiple occasions. The Southern District of New York, I bet they have. Maine Justice, I'll bet they all have. Of course they have. That's how you get rid of people. Give them severance, have them sign these disclosure, non-disclosures, and you kick their ass, ass to the curb. That's what they do. In corporations large and small, and in government operations large and small. Well, you see, Donald Trump did that, and it was illegal. Because he used business funds. You can't do that. Of course you can. No, you can't. Yes, you can. Everyone knows it's a jackass bunch of indictments. So he charges him on over 30 counts. That's New York. Then we have Atlanta, Georgia. Atlanta, Georgia. Every conceivable statute is used, and then some. 19 defendants. And ladies and gentlemen, this isn't some drug cartel case. This isn't some extensive sex trafficking case. It's an election matter. So she's not interested in justice. She's interested in convictions. And now Donald Trump is facing potential of a thousand years in prison from this. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. You know what helps me sleep well at night? Physical gold. I'm concerned about what the Biden administration is doing, and I've decided to learn more about gold IRAs to help me diversify. Did you know you can buy gold for your IRA or 401k? Gold can't be tracked like digital currency. No one has to know what you're buying, and there's no way to print more. My best resource for gold IRAs is Augusta Precious Metals. Their track record is no less than phenomenal. Learn why thousands of Americans are getting gold IRAs as part of the retirement portfolios and you need to contact Augusta Precious Metals and get their free guide. I'm serious. Text LEVIN to 68592. Again, text L-E-V-I-N to 68592. LEVIN to 68592 or go to AugustaPreciousMetals.com. That's AugustaPreciousMetals.com. Text date and message rates may apply. Performance varies. Consult your financial professionals before making investment decisions and get risk disclosures at AugustaPreciousMetals.com. I will be on Hannity tonight, I believe around 9, 20, 9, 25 p.m. Eastern Time, if I can get my tukas from here to there in time. That's tonight. Don't forget, the Democrat Party hates America. Folks, Leo Terrell knows, you know. Grab your copies now. We need to get ready. I'll be right back. This segment of the podcast is exclusively sponsored by Pure Talk. Pure Talk offers great coverage and can save your family money on your wireless bill every single month. Go to puretalk.com to find the plan that's right for you. Thank you again for listening, and thank you so much for this sponsorship, Pure Talk. He's here. He's here. Now, broadcasting from the underground command post, deep in the bowels of a hidden bunker, somewhere under the brick and steel of a nondescript building, we've once again made contact with our leader, Mark Levin. Hello, America. Mark Levin here. Our number, 877-381-3811. 877-381-3811. I see... And it's important that a lot of arguments we make here on radio, and I want to say hello to all the producers for the various shows who listen in, TV and radio, uh, are starting to gain traction. That's very, very important. You know, it's interesting, folks. Ever hear the phrase, faithless electors? You ever hear that phrase, Mr. Producer? Now, what's a faithless elector? A faithless, a faithless elector is somebody <clears throat> who is part of the Electoral College, part of the slate of the Democrat, Republican, or some other party. And when you go to vote, you're actually voting for the slate of electors. And then depending on who wins the popular vote in the state, the way it's theoretically supposed to work, that slate of electors, they meet with the other slates of electors, 
and they vote. And then that is sent into Congress eventually. And Congress looks at that, they make a decision. So there was a period of time when we had left-wing professors like Lawrence Lessig who were arguing for the case of faithless electors who, who said, look, are we kind of tired of the George W. Bushes winning when they don't win the popular vote? Or even the Donald Trumps for that matter? Well, these electors should look at that. And even Republican electors should say, you know what? I'm going to do the will of the majority in my state. I'm deciding to throw my vote, to cast my vote, not with the Republicans, even though I'm a Republican elector, but with the Democrats. Now, the court eventually rejected that, but this was an argument that was being made by law professors, by left-wing law professors. Now, Could it be said that these professors, that these professors were so crazy, but nonetheless, that they were speaking in ways that undermine the electoral process, that they were conspiring to deny a victory for the electoral winner in a particular state? Why not? Those professors weren't charged with anything. Those professors weren't charged with anything. It's just incredible how this works. Now, John Eastman's charged. He's indicted in two places for making the case, well, for making a variety of legal cases. You're indicted for giving a legal opinion. He was the dean of a law school in California. Dean of a law school in California. And they try to destroy his reputation and destroy his life and his career. It's just incredible to me that in this country, this, we've, we've sunk so far so fast. <clears throat> the Democrat Party is so aggressive and so fearful of being stopped in its tracks now that it will do anything. And it's hiding behind these prosecutors, of course. These 51 former national security advisors or experts or whatever they call themselves, The fact is that they now, shouldn't they be on the line? Shouldn't Blinken, who got them to write that letter that the laptop, the laptop, the Hunter Biden laptop was nothing in order to cover it up during the election? I would think so. I've come to learn this, ladies and gentlemen, about the press, our press, the corrupt press on the left. I've come to learn something. That there's no real independent thinking for many of these people. There's no independent thinking. They put a wet finger in the air and they see what's going on on the left. They see what's going on on the right. I have spent the last 20 years, 21 really soon, on radio... It'll be 10 books now with the Democrat Party Hates America, but excluding Rescuing Sprite. It'll be nine books, substantive books on philosophy and so forth. Understanding this. That if you make compelling arguments, if you make compelling arguments eventually, they will be repeated by the plagiarists who are conservatives, by the plagiarists who write columns, by the plagiarists who have microphones and TV cameras. This is taking place today, 
And by the way, I'm not necessarily against it. I'm against the the unethical nature of regurgitating and plagiarizing and not giving credit. I wrote this book. I can't even tell you how many endnotes there are in this book. Well, I will tell you how many pages of endnotes there are. But there are hundreds and hundreds of endnotes. And an endnote is nothing more than giving credit to a source. It's a footnote. It's giving credit to a source. I try to be absolutely scrupulous about this. And as I look now, we have 338, (coughs) almost 100 pages of endnotes. 80 pages or so, something like that. With approximately um, 15 to 20 endnotes on each page. I do this myself, the research. I don't want to pat on the back, I'm just distinguishing what we do here from others. When I was on Hannity last night, behind this microphone for the last month, talking about the Democrat Party Hates America, on Levin TV, and of course on my Sunday show when I have a good chunk of time to speak on TV. I've now explained several times that what's going on here is not about justice. What's going on here is not about law and order. What's going on here is a revolution. The purpose of which is to destroy the Republican Party, to destroy people who dare to challenge the Democrat Party, to destroy the most effective Republican leaders like Trump, who take on the Democrat Party, and others in the future. To create one party monopoly, as I say, a party state, one party state, that works hand in glove with the one party media with the one state media, that is the state-run media. People talk about two kinds of justice. It really is frustrating to hear this phrase. Two kinds of justice is no justice. It's no justice. A conservative Republican in Washington, D.C. cannot get justice. In Atlanta, cannot get justice. In New York, cannot get justice. It's not possible anymore. So we go through the motions. As Scalia has said, and he's right, one of the most incredible constitutions ever written in 1936 was the Constitution of the Soviet Union. It was Stalin's constitution, but it was meaningless. It was pointless. It didn't mean anything. In the hands of the Democrat Party, our constitution doesn't mean anything. Executive orders are issued, like legislation. The Bill of Rights are under attack, especially the First Amendment, the Fifth, due process. The Second, the right to bear arms. The Bill of Rights are fantastic, but they don't mean anything if they're not upheld. Nothing. Elections are crucially important. Unless the franchise is destroyed. Through election law changes, through ballot changes, through the counting of ballot changes, through the mechanisms in which you vote, they change. Can have all the elections you want. They have elections in communist regimes. They have elections in fascistic regimes. The Palestinians have elections. They mean nothing. Absolutely nothing. They give the, the imprimatur of a democracy. They give the imprimatur of majoritarianism. But they're iron-fisted police states. Top-down, iron-fisted police state. What does the word democracy even mean? You see, this is where we are. It has a relative meaning. It depends if you're in communist China, fascistic Russia, 
the Islamo-Nazi regime in Iran, communist Cuba, communist Venezuela, California versus, say, Florida. What does democracy mean? What does voting mean? What does justice mean? So we're going through the motions of a constitutional republic. We're going through the motions. If what's going on now stands, we will cease to be a constitutional republic. Because at the core of a constitutional republic is separation of powers, is federalism, is representative government, is the will of the people. Is one person, one vote, legitimately. It's a sovereign nation with real borders. Respect for private property rights. Respect for parents and the nuclear family. Respect for really, truthfully, peaceful protests from pro-lifers. None of that's occurring today. None of it. When you have really low IQ, surface level hosts and so-called journalists say, Donald Trump's been indicted four times. You know who's been indicted? We have. We the people have been indicted four times. But every one of these Democrat Party sycophants, all these charges... They're against us. They're against us. They're against the GOP. They are against our constitutional order. Every one of them. I heard one host, friendly host on Fox Today say, I mean, there's 90, whatever, 91 indictments. They can't all be wrong. There's 91 indictments. They can't all be wrong. Is that what we say in Putin's Russia? Is that what we say in the Islamo-Nazi regime in Iran? Is that what we say in communist Cuba? They can't all be wrong? Well, they're all wrong. The whole concept of indicting a candidate, particularly with these charges, during the course of an election, they're all wrong. The whole damn thing is wrong. All of it. It's like when they say, you know, there were 66 or 70 cases brought during the course of an election and the courts ruled. And that's that. You can't protest after that. Really? When it says the state legislatures are in charge and in the end Congress is in charge. So if a court rules something, then you can't protest. You can't lobby your members of Congress. Really? You can't send a dual slate of electors if you're Republicans in the legislature, even though it's been done in American history without charges being filed? There's nothing in the Constitution that prevents that. Nothing. Much has been said about the vice president has absolutely no power when he's overseeing the count. It's all ministerial. Really? Where does it say that in the Constitution? The Constitution says nothing. Zero. Just like indicting the President of the United States, the Constitution says nothing about that. People go on TV and say you can't do it. Why do they say that? I'm going to get to this in a minute. People say you, you can't do it. Is that in the Constitution? No. Well, why do they say it? Vice President makes the best judgment he can when he's President of the Senate. They're counting electors. I don't care what you hear from that clown, J. Michael Ludig. I don't care what you hear from that clown, Mark Short. I don't care what you hear from a quizzling politician who, unfortunately, is Mike Pence. But Mike Pence should have said, as I made the best judgment I could for the country, and I felt this is, this is what's compelled. Don't use the Constitution. The Constitution says nothing. It would not have been unconstitutional to take a timeout 
It wasn't unconstitutional to do what he did. They took a time out in 1876. So was that election completely farcical? They had a second slate of electors in 1960 and 1876. Were those elections illegitimate? Should there have been prosecutions? Tell me, does anybody think Fannie Willis even knows what the hell happened in 1876 or 1960? Well, if she did, she shouldn't have done what she did last night. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. You know what companies looking for you when they actually upgrade your service and don't charge you for it? This is great news and for new and current Pure Talk customers. Pure Talk just added data to every plan and is including a mobile hotspot with each one with no price increase whatsoever. Now, if you've considered Pure Talk before but haven't pulled the trigger, take a look again. Just $20 a month for unlimited talk text and a 50% more 5G data plus mobile hotspot. Just 20 bucks a month, folks. This is why I love Pure Talk. That also happens to be veteran-owned and only hires the best customer service team right here in America. Most families are saving almost $1,000 a year while enjoying the most dependable 5G network in America. Just go to puretalk.com and enter promo code Levin Podcast to make the switch to Pure Talk, and you'll save an additional 50% off your first month. Again, go to puretalk.com, enter promo code L-E-V-I-N Podcast. Make the switch to my cell phone company, Pure Talk, today. You know, as I sit here and think of this stuff, there is a movement across from the left, the Democrats, of course, called the Not National Popular Vote Movement. And again, I write about this in the Democrat Party Hates America. The goal is to abolish the Electoral College through the back door. No Amendment. No amendment. And the idea is states get together, Democrat states mostly, and they they have an agreement that if the Democrat gets the most votes, that regardless of who their state supported, they will throw those electoral votes behind the Democrat. Behind the Democrat. Now, That means that effectively 11 states in America could decide who the president is. 11 are the most populous states. Meaning all the other states, 39, have no representation in Washington whatsoever. This is a movement that's taking place right now. That shows you that these people are basically evil Marxists. I'll be right back. You know what company is looking for you when they actually upgrade your service? And don't charge you for it? This is great news and for new and current Pure Talk customers. Pure Talk just added data to every plan and is including a mobile hotspot with each one with no price increase whatsoever. Now, if you've considered Pure Talk before but haven't pulled the trigger, take a look again. Just $20 a month for unlimited talk text and a 50% more 5G data plus mobile hotspot. Just 20 bucks a month, folks. This is why I love Pure Talk. That also happens to be veteran-owned and only hires the best customer service team right here in America. Most families are saving almost $1,000 a year while enjoying the most dependable 5G network in America. Just go to puretalk.com and enter promo code Levin Podcast to make the switch to Pure Talk, and you'll save an additional 50% off your first month. Again, go to puretalk.com, enter promo code L-E-V-I-N Podcast. And make the switch to my cell phone company, Pure Talk, today. Mark Levin, the research arm of conservative media. Call in now, 877-381-3811. The National Popular Vote Compact, again discussed in the Democrat Party Hates America. In fact, a couple of people reading it whom you would know say this book is so encyclopedic. I don't mean in terms of reading. It flows They said almost like 1984. But the information in the book was so thorough and extensive, and that's why it took me 16 months. It's the best book I've ever written, particularly given the times we live in. So this effort, the National Popular Voting Compact, is being pushed by left-wing groups, Soros-funded groups, 
billionaire dark money groups and the Democrat Party. And Democrat states, <clears throat> you know, have legislatures and governors who have signed these bills. And they say whoever wins the national popular vote, the electors in that state, regardless of how the people in the state vote, regardless how the people of Maryland vote, the people of Minnesota vote, and so forth and so on, D.C., a non-state, that they will agree that all their electors, all their electors, regardless of the local voting, you know, states like Wisconsin, that those votes will go toward the person who wins the national popular vote. So they want to change the electoral college system effectively without amending the Constitution. Could be the biggest power grab in Democrat Party history, which, of course, does final damage to our society. And so they've gotten together this compact And they're about 80 votes away from getting this, Mr. Producer. Enough states have already signed on, Democrat states. Now, isn't that the greatest interference in electoral politics in history? But that's not even the point. It's the mindset. It's like H.R. 1, how to destroy the voting system. The national popular vote system. The Democrat Party is out to destroy the voting system. Only it can win legitimately. Whether it's the National Popular Vote Compact, whether it is censorship through Twitter, whether it is the government through the Dorn Report, whether it is prosecutors and so forth. And why is it? Because they do not want the voting system to be competitive. Not now, not ever. They're not about voting. They're about winning. Let me repeat that. They're not about voting. They're about winning. Winning. And they try and plot and scheme looking for ways to ensure that they never lose. They already have a permanent government, the administrative state. The swamp, as many call it. They already have that. But that's not good enough. There's myriad ways that our voting system are under attack, and not by Donald Trump. That's my point. Maybe I'll try and explain this on Hannity tonight. There are myriad ways our voting system is under attack, and not by Donald Trump. It's under attack by the Democrat Party. Democrat Party pushes the idea of the National Popular Vote Compact, to destroy the electoral college system. The Democrat Party seeks to register first in towns and then later, you bet, at the federal level, illegal aliens or non-citizens even more broadly to vote. The Democrat Party promotes a bill every term when the House is controlled by the Democrats to destroy all the protections in our electoral system. The Democrat uh, Party counts the vote after the elections are over. Doesn't require signatures. Doesn't require dates on ballots. When you object, you're said to be suppressing the vote. Donald Trump challenges elections. He raises questions about the elections. He says, let's look for more votes in Georgia. He says, by the way, State legislators, Republicans, you have the ability to send in a second slate of electors. That's our history. Congress sorts it out. And he's facing scores of criminal charges, federal and state. Now, you know, by the way, that Smith and Willis are coordinating. I don't have the list in front of me, Mr. Producer. What cut would that be? I think it's, I think it's the last one. 
I want you to listen to this. It's largely overlooked as people are focusing on the fact, and I don't blame them, that the indictment was listed in the morning on the official clerk webpage of the Fulton County Courthouse before the grand jury even met and voted. Now, what does that tell you? That's about as Stalinist as it gets. But I want you to listen to this from Fannie Willis. Go. Have you had any contact with the special counsel about overlap between these cases? And do you intend to try all of these defendants together? Do I intend to try the 19 defendants in this indictment together? Yes. And have you had any contact with the special counsel about the overlap between this indictment and the federal indictment? I'm not going to discuss our investigation at this time. You're not going to discuss the investigation. She didn't ask you to discuss the investigation. She said, have you had any discussion about overlap on timing? Not the substance of your investigation. So the fact that she couldn't say no means yes. Now, let me tell you what I think as a matter of logic and reason. This whole damn thing is being orchestrated by Maine Justice, the Department of Justice and the Attorney General of the United States. She's not only had contact, in my view, with the special counsel, Jack the Ripper, in Washington, D.C., she's had contact with the Department of Justice. Her charges, in case you don't know, 30, 97, 98 pages, depending on how you count, they go beyond the borders of Georgia. They go into <laughs> six other states, excuse me. And uh, they even include charges that uh, in his uh, exposition, in his phony indictment, Jack Smith has on the January 6th charges. Now, it's interesting that these prosecutors, when they issue their indictments and when they hold discussions, they never overlap like they both do it on a Tuesday by accident. And when you look at these charges, you can see they fit like a puzzle. Some cover things that the other office didn't cover, just so they can make sure that they have as many charges, as many disparate allegations as possible against Donald Trump, making defense almost impossible. And even using the most absurd laws you can even imagine. But there's a similarity in all these indictments as well, the piling on. Over 30 charges in Manhattan. Over 40 charges in Atlanta. Over 40 charges on the documents matter. And of course, the four ridiculous charges on January 6th matter. But that said, when you look at the other three, it's absolute overkill. It's piling on, as we say in the legal profession. Using irrelevant statutes, stretching statutes, using arguments never used in the course of an investigation of an election. Piling on. Does this sound like to you like they're legitimately trying to protect you from, from an effort to overturn an election? And what if Donald Trump had succeeded? What if Mike Pence put a two-week pause in place? He'd be doing nothing more than was done in 1876. And what if a second set of electors had been sent? They'd be doing nothing more than they did in 1960 in Hawaii in 1876. Period. And what if Donald Trump truly believes that the outcome of the election was corrupt? He would be doing nothing more and saying nothing more than Hillary Clinton's been saying, than Stacey Abrams has been saying. Doing and saying nothing more than Jamie Raskin has said in the numerous Republican elections. Benny Thompson, Democrat after Democrat after Democrat in the House of Representatives, not to mention the Senate. Not to mention Joe Biden, not to mention Al Gore, Hillary Clinton, Bill Clinton. False claims of fraud? What about John Eastman? What about Rudy Giuliani? What about poor Jenna Ellis? This is a young lady, really of very modest means. She's already spent a fortune defending her law license against this 65 group that's tried to destroy her. She's been on the show, as you know, now indicted in Georgia 
For what? For nothing. Nothing illegal, that's for sure. The whole notion, the whole notion of attorney representation, attorney representation, and uh, zealous advocacy is now out the window if you're a conservative Republican. That's now an indictable offense. It's now an indictable offense. So you have lawyers losing their licenses or at least having them suspended, going broke, trying to defend their careers and their livelihoods, not to mention their reputations. You have a former president. I mean, what else could they do? Non-disclosure agreements. Presidential documents. He's working hard to fight the election. You know, they keep saying overturn the results of an election. The results of an election aren't determined until the Congress says they are. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. You know what companies looking for you when they actually upgrade your service and don't charge you for it? This is great news and for new and current Pure Talk customers. Pure Talk just added data to every plan and is including a mobile hotspot with each one with no price increase whatsoever. Now, if you've considered Pure Talk before but haven't pulled the trigger, take a look again. Just $20 a month for unlimited talk text and a 50% more 5G data plus mobile hotspot. Just 20 bucks a month, folks. This is why I love Pure Talk. That also happens to be veteran-owned and only hires the best customer service team right here in America. Most families are saving almost $1,000 a year while enjoying the most dependable 5G network in America. Just go to puretalk.com and enter promo code Levin Podcast to make the switch to Pure Talk, and you'll save an additional 50% off your first month. Again, go to puretalk.com, enter promo code L-E-V-I-N Podcast. Make the switch to my cell phone company, Pure Talk, today. You know, folks, I'm so busy doing the breaks, writing notes to myself so I don't forget what to say, um, because it gets very busy here very quickly. We have a great guest next hour, too. Um, Let's see here. You probably should send me that list again, Rich, so it's at the top of my... We're having all kinds of computer issues. I don't want to bother you with this. We'll be whining about this stuff all the time. I'll be right back. He's here. He's here. Now, broadcasting from from the underground command post, deep in the bowels of a hidden bunker, somewhere under the brick and steel of a nondescript building, we've once again made contact with our leader, Mark Levin. Hello, America. Mark Levin here. Our number, 877-381-3811. Hello. Hello. 877-381-3811. I will be on Hannity tonight, I think around 9.20, 9.25 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, and you can calculate when it is in your areas of the country. But I will be on tonight. I don't do a lot of other shows on Fox. I'll do them now and then, and of course, when the book comes out. But I think there's such a thing, Mr. Producer, as overexposure, don't you? I just think there is. Plus, I have a thousand other things to do. I'm not trying to be rude. But, but Sean's my number one guy. He is. There's just no question about it. Why? Because he and I go back 21 years. That's why. And he tells the truth when he says, Mark wouldn't be on radio, but for me, meaning Sean. And that's true. I always liked it. As a kid, I always listened to talk radio. Um... But that's the way it is. And my first radio job was 14 months on WABC on a Sunday from noon to two because, well, Phil Boyce was the program director, great guy on WABC at the time. It was part of the 
ABC radio networks, which was fantastic, the ABC radio networks at the time. Again, things have changed a lot. And um, Phil said, look, you are a great guest. The people in New York love you. And he said, I've got a slot. I didn't ask. I didn't ask for anything. He said, but I have a slot that I need to fill 12 to 2 on Sundays. And I said, great, because the weekends, that's the best time for me to do this sort of thing. And he just said, we're not doing very well. You know, on a Sunday, 1 to 12 to 2. And I didn't know any better. I said, fine. He said, but there is one problem. He said, Mr. Producer, you know what it was? I can't get the general manager or the executives to pay you. I said, so in other words, you want me to do this for free? He said, I know it's asking a lot, but yeah, if you could. And I said, you know what? I said to myself, yeah, this could be fun. I could learn how to do this in the biggest city in America. So I said, okay, We'll do this month to month and see how it goes. And that's what I did for 14 months. In WABC in New York, part of the ABC radio networks, from noon to two. And I did the show from the Sale Street in Washington at ABC News headquarters, you know, where Sam Donaldson used to be and Howard K. Smith, people whose names most of you may not even remember. And I would go in there to do the show, and they had, you know, bare-bones staff there. All very professional, all very liberal, but we got along great. We had a good time. And I'd go in there and I'd do my job. And then after 14 months, I said, that's enough. I know I can do it. I had fun. His ratings tripled. Um, and I said, that's, uh, that's all she wrote. He said, well, wait a minute. I said, yes, sir. How would you like to do 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. in the evenings? I said, five times a week? He said, yes, just 6 to 7. We've tried a number of people. We've tried a number of shows. Just the one hour. You know, we'll have news in front of you. We'll have so-and-so next behind you and blah, blah, blah. And so I said, all right, let's give it a shot after talking to the family. I said, but Phil, he said, yes, I need to get some money for this. I'm a practicing lawyer working with Landmark Legal Foundation. I don't just show up and shoot the you-know-what. And he said, okay. Whatever it was, it wasn't much, but it was okay. So I did it from 6 to 7. Ratings went up. Now keep in mind, from 6 to 7, like 6 to 9 p.m. Eastern Time in New York, it's the toughest time slot in any city, but especially New York, because you have a lot of professional sports teams, and you've got a lot of radio stations, And you got a lot of sports carried on radio stations. Right, Mr. Producer? You got the fan. You got It goes on and on and on. So there's no break from baseball and hockey and so forth and so on. There's always two teams. It's like the Yankees and the Mets and so forth. And so I was up against them as I am now. In addition to being up against the station across the street, WOR. So I'm up against all news, Yankees and or Mets. This is four to five nights a week. And the other talk station. Now, nobody else in a time slot in New York on any time of that landscape has to face that kind of competition every evening. I'm not saying that as a put down. I'm just it has nothing to do with that. I'm saying it's tough. And yet we plow ahead. We have very loyal listeners. It's the mothership. For me. And so then he asks me, why am I getting into this? Because people keep asking me about this. Then he says to me, does Phil Boyce, how about two hours? 
I said, Phil, you know I have another job, right? I'm only asking two hours, he says. And then he gives me this. I don't know what they're called, Mr. Producer. You'll know what they're called. They're really backup little boxes for broadcasting. I forget what they're called. No, that's the line. Uh, not Comrex. It's a little box, a time something or other. I forget the name of it. And so I didn't have a full-scale broadcast system. I had this little box that you can travel with. You don't remember the name of it either, right, Rich? Well, anyway, it's a little box you can travel with. Uh, you, you plug it into your AT&T or Verizon line, and you have another line. And I could, at that time, fax stuff, print stuff. Very difficult to do it. But that's what I put in my basement. Because I couldn't go down to DeSales Street in Washington, D.C. My home was 30, 40 miles from Washington, D.C. So I'd finish my job, and then I'd go over and do this for two hours. Then one night he says to me, does Phil Boyce, if you don't mind, I would like to run your show in Dallas, as well as Washington. Oh, and by the way, we want you to do three hours. I said, three hours? I said, Phil, that's going to have to cost you a little more because I may have to leave my job. He said, okay, we'll do what we can. It wasn't much, but we did it. I still didn't leave my job. I needed my job. It paid me more than this. So we went to three hours, and the show was played in Dallas on the great WBAP. Now, by the way, the president of the ABC Radio Networks is a great guy. He was a great guy by the name of Mitch Dolan, who was all supportive of all this. Couldn't have been better. So I did that for three or four days because they said the local host was out. He was sick. And I said, all right, that's enough. I'm done. And the local PD there, his name was Bob, said, we want to keep Levin. And this was quietly their way of beginning to syndicate the program, Mr. Bidu. We went from there to a couple more ABC network stations to our great friends and Milwaukee, WISN, and it goes on and on and on, and that's how it happened. So long story short, actually it's not short, long story long, if it wasn't for Sean Hannity, I wouldn't be here. If it wasn't for the late, great Rush Limbaugh, who taught me a lot about this profession, I wouldn't be here either. That's why I've tried to help other people as substitute hosts when I can, if they have any questions, some of whom now are big national hosts, and I'm very excited for them, very. And some who are now the biggest hosts in their market, and I'm very excited for them, too. I'm very happy for them. That's the way you're supposed to do this. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. It's been a long time since we've had Steve Scalise on this program, and that's on me, because he's a good man. He is a fantastic GOP leader as well. Steve Scalise, these are very, very difficult times. What's being done to the country, the election system, the criminal justice system. You've got a tiny majority in the House. You guys are doing everything you can with the hearings and so forth. But regardless, you must be watching this and must be losing sleep over what's taking place with these indictments and everything. Well, Mark, it's, it's great to be back with you. And I think like a lot of Americans are looking at this, they're, they're disgusted. They hate seeing agencies that are supposed to be pure law enforcement agencies being abused to go after political opponents. And, and, and look, the American people are seeing through this. I mean, I've seen national polling where people now, even with the mainstream media going after Trump every day, barely covering all of the things we've been exposing on the Biden crime family syndicate, people are seeing this. They're figuring it out in other ways, and they recognize that what they're doing to go after Donald Trump is purely political. It seems like every day either we have a bombshell hearing in D.C. 
against the Biden family member, it's like you can set your clock within two days. Indictments come down against Trump. Maybe a poll comes out showing Trump doing even better, you know, beating Biden in a head to head matchup. They go after Trump. Uh, Some of these prosecutors, you know, look at what happened yesterday in Georgia. Fannie Willis is actually raising money off of the idea of going after Trump. It's on her website. She literally put up on her website a few days ago a headline that, among other things, bragged that she was going after the former president and using that to raise money, which undermines all the credibility. People see through this, but they're disgusted by it, Mark. And they don't know what to do about it, Steve. And it's hard to know what to do about it because what I've been saying here for some time, and I really believe this, this is, these indictments are an indictment of the American people. This is an indictment of our legal and constitutional system. All of them, these clown charges, the Klan charges, the Enron charges, the RICO charges, the non-disclosure agreement charges. It's so, it's so out of control. And yet the Democrat Party doesn't give a damn. You know why, Steve Scalise? Because they view this as their opportunity to take control of the justice system and the electoral system and then make sure that they win and you can't even challenge them anymore. That's why. Yeah, they are scared to death of losing power. We saw this during COVID. It wasn't about the science. So much is coming out now to expose how they manipulated the science to keep kids out of school because they just wanted control to tag parents as domestic terrorists and it was coming from within the fbi and some of these agencies and it all got exposed a lot of this got exposed because when we got in the majority we got subpoena power you know you have jim jordan out there you have jamie comer and his oversight committee out there every day relentlessly going after the truth but what we saw and I, and I was surprised at how much this has come our way whistleblowers are stepping forward mark at levels i've never seen some that are career bureaucrats in Washington who will admit they're Democrats, lifelong Democrats, they're disgusted by it. One of our IRS whistleblowers said he's a Democrat, but he's disgusted by them abusing these agencies to go after their political enemies. And so we're able to uncover a lot of stuff. There's a lot more coming. Uh, but yeah, people, people are watching it going, when is this going to end? When is real accountability going to happen? And we've got to keep pushing for that. Well, when is it going to happen, I wonder? Because they control the executive branch, which means they control the ability to prosecute. And they don't intend to let go of it, Steve Scalise, by hook or by crook. That's why they're doing what they're doing now to to the Republican Party in these states, to volunteers. You don't even know today what you can and cannot do without the threat of a possible charge being brought against you. Most of the things that they charged uh, Trump and his folks with and all these other people with, in Georgia, as an example, are things that are done all the time. I'm talking about, a, you know, an election, talking about how there's been fraud in the election, telling people to find more votes, yeah. not in a criminal context. Well, look at Georgia. Yep, as you're, you're as right. you're bringing this up, Mark, Stacey Abrams. It wasn't, what, five years ago that she got defeated by Kemp for governor, and she went and did a national TV circuit raising money, talking about how the election was stolen. Where are the charges against her in Atlanta? Mm-hmm. Where's where's Will? Is Willis ready to leak that out there, too? Uh, I don't see it. Uh, but, you know, you know, I, sh- I think you saw what I saw, the Charlie Kirk article that were really talked about an interesting point. Mm-hmm. You know, you've got a lot of Republican attorneys general. Uh, you know, they can do some of the same things we're seeing here. And frankly, they've encouraged this uh, by saying, OK, there's crimes that were committed uh, by a lot of high profile Democrats from the Bidens on down in states. And there are Republican attorney generals in some of those states, too. You know, we're going to keep getting facts out. You know, and you see, you know, with Jim Jordan's committee, uh, as this thing moves closer to impeachment inquiry, because all of the facts that we've gotten out is actually forced the White House to change their tune. Remember, for months, I mean, months, uh, Karine Jean-Pierre would sit up there at the podium and, you know, and say, oh, don't worry, tell this false statement uh, that, uh, President Biden never talked about business dealings with with Hunter. They said that over and over and over again until we disproved it with some of Hunter Biden's associates who said not only did he do it, he did it over 20 times. 
Uh, he was doing phone calls. He was going to dinner with some of them. And then, lo and behold, the White House changes its tune just a few days ago and says he was never in business. That's a huge change. And the reason that change happened is because we had hearings that brought these whistleblowers forward who countered what the White House was saying. The White House was flat out lying to the American people. And now there are people in these agencies and the people who are in business with Hunter Biden exposing the facts. There are more of those people that are coming forward. And we're going to continue, even during this break in August, to have those hearings and bring those whistleblowers forward. Who knows what they'll do? You know, they'll go throw more stuff at Trump to try to divert you away from it. But people are watching this. People have figured out how to get this information. Even, I mean, frankly, the mainstream media is actually starting to cover some of it, not nearly to the degree that they go after Trump, but even they can't avoid some of this stuff because it's so bad. We only have a minute, Steve Scalise. A quick question. Have you ever seen a more corrupt attorney general in your life? No, and, and remember that this was the guy that Barack Obama pres- presented as this great moderate to replace Scalia on the bench, for God's sake. Merrick Garland was going to be the moderate to replace Scalia. Don't forget that. And uh, mm-hmm. thank God that didn't happen. And Donald Trump, when he ran, he put that list together and then just went down the line with great conservative justices, constitutional justices. But before I lose you, don't you think that's part of what's going on here, retribution by Garland to Trump? 30 seconds. Oh, there's there's clearly a lot of retribution. They are, they hate Donald Trump for a lot of reasons, and they sure don't want him to come back, and they're doing everything to stop him. And it's frankly galvanizing people more towards Trump right now. Keep up the great work, Steve Scalise. We love having you on, brother. God bless you. Great being with you, Mark. Keep it up. You too. You too. We'll be right back. Mark Levin, making conservatism great again. Dial in now, 877-381-3811. I'll be on Hannity at about uh, 9.20, 9.25 p.m. Eastern Time. Who do these bastard Democrat prosecutors really think they are with their sanctimony about how they're upholding the electoral system? When they tried to take out Bush in 2000. When they tried to take out Bush again in 2004, when they tried to take out Trump in 2016, challenging the results of the elections of the floor of the House and elsewhere, with a whole media operation from Hillary Clinton and Joe Biden and Barack Obama and Al Gore on down, bottom up, middle out. Who the hell do they think they're kidding with H.R. 1, which would completely destroy the sanctity of our franchise, the electoral system? Who the hell do they think they are when they want immigrants who are non-citizens to have the right to vote in our big cities so that spreads like wildfire across other cities and other blue states, meaning you cannot check the legitimacy of their vote for federal elections? Who do they think they are when they oppose basic identification before you can vote? Who do they think they are when they're trashing the Supreme Court? Threatening the lives of Supreme Court justices, exactly what Schumer did. Refusing to use the U.S. Marshals to protect the the justices by arresting the malcontents. Who do they think they are? When they're destroying our Fifth Amendment, the right to due process. When they're destroying our First Amendment, the right to free speech. When they're destroying our First Amendment again. The right to protest, like the pro-lifers. Who the hell do they think they are pretending to defend this society when they're destroying it? Every one of these charges is a charge against this country. Every one of these charges is intended to interfere with our elections. Every one of these charges is another bullet in the heart of this republic. They know it, you know it, and I know it. They use liberty to destroy liberty. They use the Constitution to destroy the Constitution. They don't believe in the country, just ask them. They believe in critical race theory. They believe in the 1619 Project. Just ask them. That's how they've destroyed women's sports. 
Look how they're targeting the nuclear family. The government coming between their children and their parents. Look at the brainwashing. Look at the perversion and the sexuality of three, five, ten-year-olds. And they dare to tell us that they stand up for this society. They stand up for nothing except their own power. Alan Bragg is a radical Marxist installed by George Soros. Fannie Willis is a radical Marxist, and she's demonstrated that she will do anything, anything, to go after her political opponents. Jack the Ripper Smith has been admonished by juries, admonished by a unanimous Supreme Court, sent to the Hague, where he's summoned back to try and take out the leading Republican nominee for President of the United States. This is their mission. This is their directive. While this feeble old man at five-stage dimension going on six sits on the beach sits on the beach like he's Carlos Gigante, Mr. Producer. Like he's Lucky Luciano. While the mob does its dirty work and he's just a gentle old soul. Just a gentle old soul. While the mob protects his son or does the very best they can The first deal, the first deal, broken open by a real federal judge, not one of these Washington, D.C. hacks. Now, of course, Hunter Biden's lawyer, Abby, is demanding that that judge be removed from the case. They prefer the Washington, D.C. judges with their rubber stamps. The mob lawyer that runs the Department of Justice Although it gives bad names, a bad name to mob lawyers. He was caught in his deal. So now he picks his consulier and makes him the special counsel. Imagine that. Consiglier. Makes him the special counsel. How do you like that? How did that happen? Wow. Wow. Amazing. Is it? No special counsel for Joe Biden. No, can't do that. Can't pick somebody from outside the regime. Outside the government. No. Then the mob lawyer, the so-called attorney general, loses control of everything. And I want you to remember something. When you appoint a special counsel, that special counsel is focused on one person and one thing. Joe Biden and his corruption. Can't have that. No. Got a bunch of apparatchiks appointed every senior position at the Department of Injustice. There are two tiers of justice. There's no justice. The justice system as of today has been destroyed. Destroyed. As I began the program, and for the backbenchers everywhere, we go through the motions of having a legitimate, civilized justice system with integrity. We go through the motions. We have a judge. Oh, that looks very formal. He's even wearing a robe, or she. We call them Your Honor. Even though most of them don't deserve that. We have grand juries. Oh, yeah. Grand juries who are there to listen to all the evidence, which is all one-sided claptrap. But to listen to the evidence. And by majority vote, they can indict. That's all it takes. You don't get to challenge the people who sit on the grand jury. They're all handpicked, Mr. Producer. They're part of the machine now. 
And so imagine that you go into a city that voted for Trump by 5%. 5%. I don't think you could find another city on the face of the earth that only would give Donald Trump 5% of the vote, could you? No, you couldn't. So that's where the action is. In the federal cases. And we're going to violate the Department of Justice rules. The mob lawyer is. He appoints a special counsel, this guy Weiss. The regulations require that you choose somebody who's not part of the regime, that somebody's outside the government, so he picks Weiss. His flack. Then, of course, he says, Weiss asked for this. Of course he did. Sure. And yet, in the last few days, another statute, another statute told, that is, Another crime is off the table because the government didn't act fast enough. Wow. Wonder how that happened. Surely by accident. Then we have a real judge in Florida. Her name is Judge Aileen Cannon. She's hated by the the state media, the American Pravda that has destroyed the free press and the First Amendment as applies to a free press and freedom of speech. You know the ilk. You know who they are. You know where they live. They live on MSNBC and CNN. They live in the New York Times. The Holocaust-denying, Stalin-supporting, Castro-instituting New York Times. The Washington Compost, that along with the New York Times, covered up the Holocaust. But look, they need a second chance, don't you know? And the conga line of unhinged, mentally ill Democrats that they call the, the staff at MSNBC and CNN. Just to name a few. Just to name a few. And so they attack this judge. And who do they bring on? They bring on some little puke out of Palm Beach County, who's a state prosecutor, who was a radical Democrat state senator. And who show does he go on? A low IQ, no ratings clown by the name of Joe Scarborough. Another Trumper. It's a hate on for Trump. Because Trump looked at him funny one day. And Joe knows this guy. He comes on and he says, well, it's outrageous that the judge in Florida would dare to, to say anything about the odd venue situation where Jack Smith and the boys and the mob lawyer Garland are using a grand jury in Washington, D.C. to indict and then sending it down to the grand jury in Florida. Let me ask you something, folks. How many times have you heard that done? Never. I've been a lawyer for over 40 years. I was chief of staff at the Department of Justice for a long time. Special assistant, too. I don't remember it happening ever. Now, it's possible in a complicated case where you're dealing with perhaps international crimes or where you're dealing with sort of state-to-state criminal activity like drug dealers and so forth. Not in a case like this. The whole purpose here is to violate the manual for prosecutors dealing with grand juries. The title of the manual section is venue limitations. But look, at MSNBC, anything goes. The same network that was going on and on about Russia collusion has never apologized. They lied to the American people. Lied day in and day out. Their hosts lied day in and day out. They still get paid millions for being stupid and being liars and propagandists. Trump wasn't even charged by this Stalinist prosecutor for insurrection or conspiracy to commit sedition. And they all said over there that he would be. So they lied and lied, and they never apologize. Same with the Washington Compost and the New York Slimes. So the judge says, uh, government, uh, Mr. Smith's staff, you need to explain to me why you keep indicting with a grand jury in Washington, D.C., and chucking those indictments down here for me to handle. <gasps> oh, she must be in the back pocket. A Mark Levin and Jim Trusty and the right wingers on Fox. Excuse me. It's her case. She's the judge. It's going to wind up there. She sees what's happening. 
Oh, yes. This is the party of the media that's very, very concerned about our elections, America. And the rule of law. Very concerned about the rule of law. That's why they celebrate when Supreme Court justices are threatened. Oh, that's a good day. No problem. That's why they celebrate when they try to intimidate Clarence Thomas every week and Sam Alito and Neil Gorsuch. Hmm. And they play to John Roberts because they know he's a media hound. What would we do without the Democrat Party defending this republic? Fannie Willis hates this country. Alvin Bragg hates this country. He's a Soros guy. They're not defending the country. Jack the Ripper Smith had to leave the country to go to Hague because he was destroying a republic from within. He destroyed a governor who was a presidential potential and others. But I'm so thrilled they're protecting us, aren't you? I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. So I've got a lot of ideas swelling around in my head for Hannity. I'm not sure what question I'll be asked. Uh, but I will be on there tonight. And uh, I will make it worth your time, I promise. Now the problem with where I am, and my wife is with me right now in Florida, she's tending to other affairs, is that there's not a lot of restaurants open after nine around here, Mr. Producer. And I don't cook. That creates a problem because I'm not allowed to eat fast food. My wife wants me to live. Isn't she a sweet lady? Yes. There's at least one person who wants me to live and probably Mr. Producer. There's two. The kids and the grandkids, there's a few more. Ladies and gentlemen, we salute our armed forces, police officers, firefighters, and emergency personnel. The men and women, the freedom fighters in Ukraine, Taiwan, all over the world, our truckers, thank you. And you, the American people, thank God for each and every one of you. Check out Amazon before you go to bed. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> 